Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai copycat combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Orvar, the Allform, a 4-mana 3-3 legendary shapeshifter with Changeling, which is why I can get away with naming the deck Copycat, as Orvar is technically a cat as well, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell if it targets one or more other permanents we control, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. And then we have some additional flavor text saying, when a spell or ability an opponent controls causes us to discard Orvar, create a token that's a copy of target permanent. So the goal with building a deck around Orvar is to include lots of cheap instants and sorceries that target our permanents, ideally cards that also draw a card. So we've got Defiant Strike, a one-man instant, saying a target creature gets plus one plus o until end of turn, and we also get to draw a card, as well as Chilling Trap, saying target creature gets a minus four minus o until end of turn, and if we control a wizard we also get to draw a card, so we can still target our own creature with Chilling Trap, just to get to copy with Orvar. And then one of the more exciting creatures to target with all those instants is a Goldspan Dragon, a 5 mana 4 4 dragon with flying and haste. And whenever the dragon attacks or becomes the target of a spell, create a treasure token. And then we can sacrifice a treasure, making double the amount of mana as long as Goldspan Dragon is in play. So we get essentially 2 mana back for each spell that targets Goldspan Dragon, which means that now our Defiant Strike, if we have both Orvar and Goldspan Dragon, and target our Goldspan Dragon, it generates a copy of Goldspan Dragon. We get a treasure that generates two mana and we get to draw a card so we can easily chain together a whole bunch of these cheap cantrips targeting our goldspan dragon and make an entire army of dragons that will be able to attack for the win and then to tie the deck together we have four copies of showdown of the skulls as a powerful card draw engine on the first chapter we exile the top four cards of our library and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards and on the second and third chapters whenever we cast a spell this turn we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control so that also rewards us for casting a whole bunch of cheap spells in the same turn and translate into a ton of plus one plus one counters which can also help us close out the game and then a neat combo with showdown of the skulls in this deck is flicker of fate a two mana instant saying exile target creature or enchantment and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control so we can use flicker of fate to exile or showdown of the skulls re-triggering its first chapter letting us cast even more spells and orvar doesn't specifically say that we have to target a creature it just says permanent so if we target showdown of the skulls with our Flicker of Fate while Orvar is in play, we get two copies of Showdown of the Skulls, so that's a ton of extra card advantage to help us dig for more cheap cantrips to combo off. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, besides our Defiant Strike and Chilling Trap, we also have the full playset of Opt as a cheap cantrip to help us assemble the various combo pieces. And we also have four copies of Spike Field Hazard, which can be played as a tap land or as a one mana instant, dealing one damage to any target, also potentially exiling the deceased creature. So this can target opposing creatures, but we can also use it to target our own creatures like Goldspan Dragon, just to trigger the ability, especially if we have Orvar in play. Then we have our full place at a Flicker of Fate, which of course can also target our creatures to potentially save them from removal, or just to trigger Orvar, we can use Flicker of Fate to target our Goldspan Dragon, and because of haste we still get to attack anyway, so it's just another cheap cantrip to trigger our various cards. And then the full playset of Sejiri Shelter, which can also be played as a tap land or a two mana instant, saying target creature we control gains protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. So this is great in combination with our Goldspan Dragon. If the opponent tries to kill our Goldspan Dragon, we first generate a treasure token from the ability, and then we can sacrifice that treasure for two mana to cast Sejiri Shelter to protect our Goldspan Dragon from any targeted removal and generate an extra treasure right away. And of course, also great if we're comboing off with Orvar and Goldspan as we get to make an another copy of Goldspan Dragon. Then we also have the full playset of Seagate Stormcaller, a 2 mana 2 1 human wizard, so it's a wizard for Chilling Trap as well. And then when Seagate Stormcaller enters the battlefield, we get to copy the next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 2 or less. We cast this turn and choose new targets for the copies. So the Stormcaller can potentially double up on an opt on turn 3, so we get to scry 1 and draw a card twice. But it's also very nice with cards like Chilling Trap and Defiant Strike, especially if we have Orvar or Goldspan Dragon in play to combo with them. And then of course we've got our four copies of Orvar, four copies of Showdown of the Skulls, 
for Goldspan Dragons, and finally two copies of Shipwreck Dowser, which is also very synergistic with Orvar, as a 5 mana 3 3 Merfolk Wizard with prowess, so it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non creature spell, and when the Dowser enters the battlefield, return any target instant or sorcery card from our graveyard to our hand, and there's no shortage of a lot of cheap instants and sorceries in the deck, so we can also potentially combine Shipwreck Dowser with Orvar, and then keep looping back cards like Defiant Strike or Chilling Trap to get additional copies of Shipwreck Dowser, which will enter the battlefield returning those cheap cantrips, so for each mana we have essentially we get to make a copy of Shipwreck Dowser and trigger prowess on all the copies that are already in play, so that's another powerful way to potentially end the game. And then the mana base of course also includes 4 copies of Spikefield Hazard and Sejiri Shelter, and then we've got 18 regular lands with 4 copies of Rogarin Triome as another tap land, and then all 12 pathways in the Jeskai Colors, as well as 1 basic mountain and 1 basic island. This way we keep the spell density quite high, so for comboing and drawing cards with our various cantrips we have a higher likelihood of drawing into more targeted spells to keep targeting our Goldspan Dragon and win the game on the spot. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. I can run out Triome, might have to play Shelter as a tap land. Turn 3 we have the option of going Stormcaller into Chilling Tramp just to draw 2, or we can wait to get Orvar in play first and make a few copies, which is always fun. Facing a Temple of Silence. Um, I think I'm still down to play Shelter Tapped, or deck can be pretty mana hungry. And we want to get up to 5 untapped, preferably. Clarion Spirits, alright. Defined Strike, so... I think I'm down to go Stormcaller into Chilling Trap this turn, and then... Next turn, we can maybe play Orvar. So Stormcaller first. Alright, Showdown of the Skulls could be a nice one too. So we'll see whether or not we want to commit Orvar, or if we're going to be patient. Happy trading Stormcaller for Clarion Spirits if they offer. Zero point on Mardu. Usher of the Fallen. Plus a Lampad of Death's Vigil. Alright, so maybe this is a Steal and Sacrifice deck, which explains Lampad under red mana. Which doesn't bode well for Orvar surviving. Although, at the very least, they can't claim the Firstborn and sacrifice, but they might have like an Akron War. And then Lampad will be able to sacrifice a turn after. I would like to get some of these 5 drops in play as well, so I could just show down this turn. Although, I wouldn't be able to make use of all the cards we exile. So, an interesting spot to be sure. Could also Stormcall or Defiant Strike, although I want to keep some instants in hand. So at the end of the day, I think I'm just leaning Showdown, even though we might not make use of all the extra cards. Just to hit my land drop for next turn. And Flicker Fate's actually pretty nice, since that can Flicker Showdown as well. Heartless Act takes out Stormcaller. Opponent attacks. Alright. So this actually looks like a decent window for Goldspan Dragon. And then with the mana we generate Flicker of Fate Showdown. And then the turn after we can Orvar and maybe if Dragon is still alive we can combo off. There's definitely a lot of ways we can sequence it here. Could also go with Seagate Stormcaller into Flicker of Fate. But I want to get either Dragon or Orvar in play this turn if I can. So Dragon makes the most sense while the opponent's tapped out. And then use the Flicker of Fate on Showdown before it goes away. Put an extra counter on Goldspan while we're here. Alright, double gold span, so we've got backup copies.
And yeah, if your opponent doesn't remove Goldspan, there's a good chance we can kill them. Opponent with a Cardur Doom Scourge. Opponent keeps one spirit token back. Fair enough. So yeah, it's time to combo off here. Play Orvar. Counter on Goldspan. Lampad holding priority here. Defiant Strike, target Goldspan. Make a copy and put counter on Goldspan. Now we still haven't played land for the turn. Gonna Chilling Trap. Now the thing is, if we pick up another Flicker of Fate and wanna flicker Goldspan, we wanna make sure that we flicker the non-token Goldspan, so we wanna start putting counters on the tokens. And maybe Chilling Trap with this one, especially when the opponent also has a Spirit Token to block. It makes more sense to shrink down the largest dragon. And then we'll start spreading out the counters a bit. All right, land is nice. So now I can go Stormcaller into Double Chilling Trap. Pick up Hazard and Shelter. So let's Hazard just to make some more mana. And then maybe go Stormcaller plus Opts. To keep digging. The fine strike is perfect. And we've already played a land. Flicker of Fate can Flicker Showdown for more card advantage, which will also be doubled by Orvar. And we'll keep spreading out counters here. Although I think our opponent's already dead on board. Four more cards exiled. And then each Shelter and Flicker of Fate represents another Goldspan Dragon. And then as soon as we attack with all our dragons, we'll be able to make even more mana to potentially cast more stuff in our second main phase. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand seems pretty bad. A lot of tap lands, no blue mana. Overall pretty slow. This is better. Definitely based on the strength of Showdown of the Skulls to help us find more cards. And then I'm tempted to just keep Double Hazard to make sure we can keep hitting our land drops and then probably Bottom Chilling Trap, which is a more conditional card. Can always cast Spikefield Hazard if needed. So I'll hang on to it as a spell for now. And Lotus Cobra, pretty nice target. Could cast Defiant Strike first just to draw a card, but in this case, since we have Showdown, I'm happy keeping Defiant Strike as a way to potentially trigger Orvar or Goldspan Dragon. So 
So Cobranga dealt with. Akum Hellhound joins the fun, so it looks like a landfall synergy deck. Ooh, and a Goldspan Dragon. Alright, let's play Showdown and see if we can find an Orvar. We can. Alright, so this is shaping up nicely. Even have a Flicker of Fate for Showdown, which is great. So just need to survive two turns and another Orvar in hand as insurance. So now we also have the option of playing Goldspan Dragon, attacking, making a treasure that taps for two mana, which could help me cast Spike Field to kill Hellhound, or maybe Flicker of Fates, although I'll have to main phase it on the showdown. Just casting Orvar seems better to me. And then I think I will play Hazard. So, yeah, we'll play this as blue. Play Orvar. And Spike Fields, Hellhound. Cards are gone. Would like to draw another land so we can play Goldspan and target it with Defiant Strike right away. But now Orvar also gets to block Rada. Alright, backup showdown is not a bad draw. Probably should have gone full control just on the off chance that I top decked into another Flicker of Fate to target my showdown of the Skulls. But now I can just Goldspan, attack, and then next turn showdown to dig towards more copies of Defiant Strike. Attack with both. And I can essentially make another goal span at instant speed here with Defined Strike. Opponent playing a lens over the top with Azusa and Rada. Finds an Ancient Green Warden. Alright. 5 7 reach, so I can block goal span. Opponent does not attack. I guess we can wait on the Defined Strike. Another goal span. So we'll show down first. I guess tapping like this is fine. I right, only found one targeted spell, but I can give my dragon protection from green to get past the green warden. As well as defined strike. And play another gold span, and we should be able to attack for lethal here. Alright, sweet. Orvar and his dragons claim another victim. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Can play Shelter as a tap land, and then turn 3 Stormcaller Chilling Trap draws 2, which gets us closer to Showdown of the Skulls. Opponent on a World Tree deck. Nice to see Goldspan Dragon. Now I will need some more lands, because if we play this as a blue source so we can Stormcaller plus Chilling Trap, we won't have any red for Goldspan or Showdown. Orvar, also a nice addition. So for now. We'll pass and then hope to pick up another land next turn. Cultivate for ramp. Gets double plane, so this is likely a Doomscar. Alright, now going Stormcaller into Opts makes it pretty likely that we can find red mana for showdown. Although there's a chance it will be tapped and we'll have to wait an extra turn. Fine strike will put on the bottom. And pathway is perfect. Alright. So given that this is likely a Doomscar, it's gonna be tricky to get both Orvar and Goldspan Dragon in play at the same time. So it might be a slightly slower combo. 
Another cultivate. Not sure if the opponent has a lot of gods in their deck for the world tree. But it might be the case. Another card foretold. And a flicker fate. So, I could already showdown. Could play Orvar, get my board wiped. Setting up showdown doesn't seem bad because we also have flicker fate to combo with it. So we could already run out gold span next turn, thanks to the Needle Verge. Although ideally we can just combo off in one big turn without giving the opponent a chance to use sorcery speed removal. Another world tree and the Raven's Warning, alright. Make that two. So now I feel less bad about potentially running out a creature and getting the board wiped. So let's see, double Raven's Warning. They're probably trying to make use of that final chapter for some sort of two-card combo. They might also be trying to take some extra turns here with Alrin's Epiphany, that could be the case. I think I like Goldspan just to start generating more mana. Sack with both. Opponent lets damage happen. And then do I want to opt and Chilling Trap? I guess I can Chilling Trap my own dragon just to make another treasure. And draw a card. And then might as well opt before it goes away. And another showdown. Mm, probably not necessary since we have Flicker and I would rather find more untapped lands. And then I think we pass. I have to discard to hand size. There's no real reason to shelter just for an extra treasure here. And then discard. Maybe don't need Stormcaller. And we'll see what they plan to do here with these foretold cards. Opponent gets to see my hand. Could also flicker fade gold span just to have a blocker. Is that worth it? Probably not. All right, let's see what they've got next. Suppose it could also be a Mystic Reflection deck, trying to use Raven's Warning to set up the Hoplite. So that could also make sense. In which case they could transform Orvar into a Raven if we play it, but never mind, it's Doomscar. So yeah, that happens, can't really save any of my creatures. And another Raven's Warning. Alright, so... I just want to... untap here. Take our draw step. And then the question is if we want to flicker showdown. I think we're just gonna replay another Goldspan Dragon here. Which might be the victim of Mystic Reflection on Bird. Although in that case... I could potentially flicker the bird. So, yeah, let's take our draw. So picking up an untapped land actually pretty nice here. Play Goldspan. Resolves. And we'll attack.
opponent does get to search a card out of their sideboard potentially. Now I could play Orvar and start making a bunch of copies of Goldspan, but they would all die to another Sorcery Speed Sweeper, so that doesn't seem worth it. So we'll just pass. And then next turn we can set up the kill, assuming nothing bad happens. And I could always use Chilling Trap to prevent the opponent from drawing into whatever they put on top of their deck. And then we still have three ways of targeting our gold span after we play Orvar, which should be enough to close out the game. So our opponent puts two cards on top. And I'll probably Chilling Trap so they won't be able to draw with the Raven's Warning. Now if they have another Doomscar they can wipe the board again and uh, delay us from comboing. Although we're almost at the point where we can just combo anyways if we draw another land. Because we can play Goldspan and then these tap for two mana each. And then I just need one more mana to start casting my two drops. Or drawing another one mana targeting effect will do it too. So Doomscar is beatable. They don't need to fetch with Fabled Passage because of the World Tree letting it tap for any mana. Phyleth, alright, so this is probably a Mystic Reflection incoming, is my guess. Although Mystic Reflection doesn't work on legendary creatures, so yeah, they're gonna target my Goldspan Dragon with the Mystic Reflection. But then in response we can just uh, give it protection from blue here. And that should deal with it. So they won't be able to make a million goldspan dragons. Instead they just get some plants. Alright, and then we get to untap, play Orvar. And then I guess we might as well opt first, see what else we pick up. Another Flicker Fate, so I can flicker my gold span just to make a copy. Protection from black will do. And another gold span. Alright, and our opponent concedes, can attack with all, and that's 20 damage here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand seems fine. A lot of tap lands, unfortunately, but showdown pretty important to help us assemble the combo and flicker of fate combos nicely with showdown as well and we're gonna have to play hazard as a tap land would be nice to find another blue source to go with our stormcaller opponent on the red white and takum hellhound i guess we should probably just kill that with hazard And then I can always target an opposing creature with Defiant Strike to draw a card. Any land lets me Stormcaller plus Defiant Strike if it's untapped, that is. Alright, Alpine Houndmasters, your opponent on Dark Tribal. 
Yeah, they could run us over quickly if we miss our land drops. But we did not. And then I'll just pass here. I might define strike. End of turn just to draw a card. Opponent's playing green as well, so it could also be a Winota deck. Take two. Yeah, I think I cycle this. Alright, so I can either showdown or go Stormcaller into Chilling Trap. I think we showdown. Gives me a better chance of hitting my land for next turn. Alright, find a gold span dragon, that's great, so could potentially go gold span and then flicker fate showdown of the skulls. After getting a treasure. Don't expect their deck to have too much removal. Pack leader. Gonna pump up the dogs. So we're potentially facing lethal next turn already. We did pick up Orvar, so yeah, just gotta play Goldspan. I could also flicker fade Goldspan, just have an extra blocker. Since now we probably don't need to flicker showdown. So, yeah, I think we just pass here. Can always decide to flicker showdown in my upkeep here in response to the third chapter. Uh oh, there's Winota. So, Winota is bad news. And Flicker doesn't really interact with Winota the way we want to. Now I could Flicker a non-human, just to remove one attacker in the hopes of the opponent not hitting as many creatures with Winota. I could Flicker Fate my Goldspan Dragon and then have a blocker and Flicker Fate another attacker. But we basically don't have a way to interact with Winota herself, that's significant. So we're at 12. We're gonna be taking 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 3 more from Houndmaster. So we're already facing lethal on the board before we even factor in Winota. So yeah, I think my best chance is Flicker, Goldspan, make a treasure, and then. Probably flicker watchdog here. Because Houndmaster doesn't trigger Winota at least. And then hope that we can survive this attack and still win next turn somehow. Foster's Lieutenant, a uh, good hit. And they hit a second one, so that's rough. So I can block a lieutenant, but we're still taking lethal, and Chumping Houndmaster is also not gonna let me win here. Seven, I guess I could go to one. But I don't imagine coming back from this. So yeah, we had a good chance of comboing here, but we were just a turn too slow. And our opponent had a nice draw with Winota. So I can play Orvar. And then Chilling Trap, but that's not gonna save me. I guess we'll wait until the opponent's turn here. Even though we miss out on a plus one counter, I think we'll manage. Opponent gets to attack and trigger Winota some more.
lots of triggers. And we can't forget that Orvar is also a wizard, so it does draw a card of Chilling Tramp. And we get to find out what the green is for. It's for Maya, Breta Guard Protector. It's another nice human that they can hit with Winota. And of course, Kenrith. And we even get to see Silverwing Squadron, one of the Brawl cards, I believe, from Eldraine. So that's another powerful human. All right, well, we got to see our opponent's deck go off here. I don't think they could have had a better draw. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and this hand's not particularly exciting. No combo pieces, no showdown of the skulls, no real card selection. Take a mulligan. This is better. Flicker can go. And then I'm hoping we can find a second blue so we can combine opt with Stormcaller on turn three to scry one and draw a card twice. All right, I can fire off one opt to find another blue source. Opponent on the red green. And a turn two Florahedron. Can maybe find a spike field hazard to deal with it. Gonna say no to Define Strike. Alright, perfect. So there's my second blue source. So next turn I'll be able to Stormcaller Opts, which helps me hit my land drops for Orvar and Goldspan. We're pretty light on ways to target our creatures right now, so that's our next priority. And a forest over the top. Alright, there's Spike Field for Florahedron. Mm, I think I still prefer Stormcaller Opt here, or do I? I guess I could take a turn off just killing the Florahedron. Nah, I think I keep digging. That way, if we miss on a land, I can always play Spikefield as a tap land. And it's also a way to potentially target Goldspan Dragon. Don't think I need to keep a second copy and a fight strike. All right. So, especially if we can find another untapped lane, we can Orvar on four, Goldspan on five, and then have ways to target it. Falcon Exploration combines nicely with all these landfall synergies. Take three from Rada. All right, so the way our lands are set up, I'm not guaranteed to curve Orvar into Goldspan, so I might want to play a tap land here. So how about we spike field, kill Florahedron, play Trium tapped, and take it from there. And then I can Goldspan on five and an Orvar plus maybe Defined Strike the turn after. Getting the extra mana from Goldspan first seems more important, and hopefully it'll survive one turn. Opponent finds a vast with Surge, can ramp for two. Can't forget about Rados activated ability, which can threaten a lot of extra damage, but we can maybe jump with a Stormcaller if needed. Azusa, pretty strong here. Plays Tangled Veil of the top. Finds another exploration. Pathway finds an extra land. And our opponent's done for the turn. Yeah, it's time for a gold span dragon. I'll keep Stormcaller back to jump Rada. Could play another Stormcaller just as an extra chum blocker. Didn't think that'll be necessary. 
Phylath, a World Sculptor. It's going to make a lot of planes. Although they don't fly. Double Valakut Exploration triggers. Opponent against a 4-5 plant. Finds another Phylath, which they can't cast. Double Lotus Cobra waiting in the wings. Alright, so we pretty much have to combo off next turn, otherwise we're gonna be dead. And we're still gonna take a healthy amount of damage here. End of turn from the Valakut Explorations. So we're at 6, and a showdown of the skulls. So step 1, Orvar. And then I don't mind going Stormcaller into Defiant Strike. And hopefully draw into some action. Well, we can cast another Showdown of the Skulls. Alright, and then I can still Defiant Strike. And Spikefield Hazard can also target one of my dragons. And that should be just enough here. With all the mana from these treasure tokens, I could also play Shipwreck Dowser, get back Defiant Strike, play Defiant Strike on Shipwreck Dowser, which is a nice loop that can generate an extra Shipwreck Dowser for every mana we have available. So yeah, our Jeskai Copycat combo deck Pretty nice against decks that don't have a whole lot of creature removal, that don't interact with Orvar and Goldspan Dragon, as we can usually kill around turn 6. So it's not the fastest combo deck in existence, but it's definitely capable of doing some powerful things if it gets to untap with its key combo pieces. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.